Hello and welcome to a very exciting um, video about some of the work that Mibolo has been doing. And a special shout out to uh, Kelly Mian here, uh, that's Drone. Uh, he uh, helped integrate this wonderful, wonderful um, piece of software into the Handmade Network website. And of course, Miblo is the guy, the mastermind behind the Sonera project. So, um, first of all, if you go to Sonera.handmade.network, um, I think that'll take you to the actual project that Miblo has. Yeah, so this is Sonera, uh, the, the, um, the image for Sonera is a bit of a joke made by uh, insofar as and myself. Um, but uh, it is an amazing little project he has here. So you can read all about this. Uh, it's it's really amazing what he has. It's, it's like an entire tool chain from the stuff he needs to do his annotation work all the way up to what I'm going to be showing off today, which is like the end user uh, interface for for consuming content, basically. Uh, and it's extremely exciting what all this is able to do. Now, uh, what I'm going to be showing today, of course, is mainly uh, Miblo's work. And uh, if you want to support Miblo, now, he got off Patreon, yeah. So he's no longer on Patreon. You might have to contact him <laughs> to find the uh, the proper way to to support him these days. Uh, I'm not sure what it might be, but uh, one way to indirectly support him is if you go to Patreon.risky.tv. Um. You'll see in my transparency reports that I, of course, pay Miblo to do all my annotation work. And uh, uh, money that goes to me through Patreon, uh, basically all of it is going to Miblo, plus money out of my own savings goes to Miblo as well. Because we haven't hit the, you know, the amount of of money that I'm paying for annotations. And of course it depends on how much content I do. But uh, the point is uh, you can support me to indirectly support Miblo and you can also contact Miblo if you want to find out how to support him for all this amazing work that he's doing. I thought I'd mention that right away. But uh, the point of this video is not to try to get people to, to to support, but the point is to show off this uh, amazing new t technology we have. So if we go to scenario.risky.tv, it takes you to the uh, Risky Business Project on the Handmade Network, uh, specifically the new fancy episode guide. So this is Scenario uh, in terms of the, the user interface that it provides us the the consumer of the the videos ah uh, that's an awesome point that Kelly Mian points out if you support handmade hero uh, Casey Muratori supports Miblo as well so that's another way uh, if you want to support Miblo for his amazing work that he's done here uh, you can indirectly support him through Casey So here we see the first thing you you encounter when you go to the episode guide. Um, so before I start demoing this, let me just give you guys a bit of a preface. So the question here is how to consume long form video content. The kind of content I make is obviously not for everybody because it's very long videos. Uh, it's not like cut down and filtered to the highlights <laughs> and it's just me going through uh, from the perspective of someone who's new to all the risk vibe stuff learning it and you know developing skill in it becoming an expert over a long a long amount of time 
and I think there's a lot of educational uh, insight to be gained from that. Uh, and obviously people watch it for just, I guess, entertainment too. Uh, I don't know why <laughs> exactly people watch my content, but <laughs> uh, people do. I guess, you know, as they say, if you build it, they will come. Uh, but <clears throat> uh, to me, it's kind of amazing that there's already a following that Risky Business has, because until now, uh, in my opinion, we, di we didn't really have a good way to actually use my content. Uh, the thing about, you know, like the question of should you write an article? Should you write a book? Should you do like a blog post? Should you make a video about something? Should you, you know, like how do you want to make your content so that people can, you know, consume it? There are different forms of media that you can use as a creator to express whatever. And a lot of people prefer written form because, uh, you know, you can search it for one thing. That's a, a huge advantage that written text has over video is that you can search the content for the bit you're interested in. And um, if you've watched my series, you've seen a number of times uh, uh, me mention how important it is that Miblo does annotations for the series because um, it gives you that ability with video. It's still not, you know, it can never be on the same level of text, but it's it's so much cl closer to text than just having to wade through, you know, a hundred videos that are all like multiple hours long and, you know, like skim around in a video trying to hit the part you, you're trying to remember or whatever. If you've watched my series a lot, I'm sure you've seen what I do is when I need to get a refresher on something I've done on the on the show, I go to code.risky.tv, which takes you to my GitHub repository, and there's the annotations repository. And then what I do is I, you know, you see this, it has the search functionality. I'd say like, I want to know about, I don't know, hardware threads. And here, you know, you can see all the points where hardware thread is referenced, and then I can read through the annotations and then go over to YouTube. <laughs> so then I'd open another tab and go to risky.tv, right? Find the video that this, these annotations are from, and then move to the part where we're in the video, the, the annotation is, uh, you know, telling us where to go, right? That's obviously not the best solution, but it works, right? That was kind of the, the stopgap solution. But what Miblo has here is a complete game changer. And in this, in my opinion, this is the, the way to consume my content. This is what we really have been needing. Uh, it really makes my series approachable for a lot of people who might not otherwise want to sit down and watch a video from start to finish, uh, you know, like a lot of people don't necessarily have the time for that, but here, look at what you can do. So here's a query, right? So we're going to do the first thing that this presents us with, which is you see, we get a list of every video I've done and these are the risky business ones. He also has the book, uh, book club series. So if you go here, you get all the book club videos. Now, uh, it it isn't currently like a tree structure. So we do multiple books and you see down here, there's a few for the, the risky, uh, the risk five reader book. Whereas these ones are for computer organization and design. But I think in the future, he might be implementing a, a tree like structure for sub projects. Uh, and don't quote me on that. <laughs> you know, it's up to, it's up to Miblo, but um, something like that might happen in the future. But uh, if we go back to the main risky one, uh, the example I gave you was searching for hardware thread, right? H A R T. So you know, let's just go to the query box and say hardware thread, and look at that. See how fast that is, and see how it updates the results in real time. Is that not amazing or what? Like that is, you know, this is an absolute game changer. If you want to watch my content, 
you just go to scenario.risky.tv and you just type in what you want to see and you get updates in real time. This is amazing for if you want to reference something in a video you've already seen or you have a specific topic in mind that you haven't already seen my content for but you want to look for it and you know see the bits that are relevant to what you're wondering about. So for example, you know, here's where we learn what uh, you know, HART stands for, that it's the hardware thread. I guess in this case we're looking at MHART ID and we see that it's the machine hardware thread ID. Right. So, you know, we can just click on it and it opens a tab for us. You know, it finds the video for us. It automatically Although, jumps something to the annotation spot. So we're passing. So you can see it automatically started playing where that actually annotation happens, where the relevant part of the video. Uh, the other thing I want to show off here, let me mute to the video and keep it playing. So if you look on the right here, this is the first thing I want to point out is you have the video on the left, the YouTube video, and on the right, you have this, um, this pane that has all these different annotations in it. So all of the annotations in the video show up over here. And you can see there's a progress bar uh, for the one that's playing. So it's showing us that we're on the learned that mHeart ID is the hardware thread ID annotation. That's what's currently playing in the video. And we can see how far along we are within that annotation, right? And so we can click in here and it skips ahead or skips back within the annotation. So we can use this to jump around and, you know, kind of scrub around within a single annotation. We can click on another annotation to jump to a different part of the video, right? So now we're looking at consulting the privilege ISA spec on CSR. Uh, and um, the other thing to point out is, uh, see this, there's these references right here. Uh, you can see that if you, if you look at the references, he provides you with these links to any documents that we reference in the video. And, uh, you know, I believe you can just click on them. Yeah, you can click on them and it takes you to the actual page that we're referencing in the video. So here you see we're referencing the draft privileged ISA spec version 1.10 and you, you know, you see the actual document right here. So all the references go in this reference pane, this reference tab that he provides. Uh, you can also see there are different topics uh, and different types of media. So you can kind of do a filtering. So you, there's multiple filtering modes. There's inclusive and exclusive. Uh, there's different topics. So for this video, the topics are assembly and hardware, and the different media types are blackboard. So those are uh, when I'm doing like um, Milton uh, using my, my drawing tablet, or writing stuff out in Milton, you can see those blackboard sessions. Uh, you can see when there's chat comments on the stream. You can see when I'm doing programming work. You can see when I'm doing research. You know, and like I say, there's different things like assembly and hardware. And you can see down here in the actual video stuff, uh, these little dots are indicating like this is these are green dots so you see those are related to assembly whereas this one has green and red so it's related to assembly and uh, hardware and you'll also notice in the background of these like this one right here has a uh, a blackboard background and you see on the stream, when I clicked on that annotation, I'm on my, my Milton drawing program. 
So it matches up with, you know, what it filters by. So if we try out some of these filters, let's say I just want to see uh, Blackboard content. So now, or does this filter Blackboard content out? I actually haven't tried this. <laughs> okay, so if we go exclusive, it looks like it filtered it out. If we go inclusive, I maybe should have tried this before <laughs> beforehand. I, I thought that would um, filter like I was expecting, but maybe not. Okay, so it looks like what's happening is when it's in the inclusive mode, it's saying uh, if we click this and you see it goes gray, it filtered out just that category. So. When we say inclusive, we're saying, uh, you know, only show the ones that are like marked as active. So if we just want to see chat comments, right, here's just chat comments. Now, if we set it to exclusive, I'm still not totally sure I understand. Exclusive, oh, exclusive, I see. So uh, you see that these are um, these have different things. So uh, this one right here, read about the machine level ISA. Uh, this has um, hardware, right? So here we're seeing um, here's assembly, hardware, and chat comments. Basically, is what we filtered by. So it's inclusive. ASM, hardware, chat comments. Now, if I say exclusive, we get things. So I guess I still don't totally understand exclusive filtering because here we're getting a, uh, a chat comment and here we're getting another. So, okay, so it's chat comments. It's the, it's the combination of the filters we've set. So here we have a chat comment that is both um, assembly and and it's a chat comment, right? So if there was a chat comment that was hardware and a chat comment or a comment that was all three of those, it would show up. But it has to be a combination of these to show up. Like it won't just give you just chat comments or just ASM or just hardware. It has to be uh, a combination, I guess. Well, but this one is just a normal chat comment. Let me go back to inclusive. Show me just chat comments. So I wish Miblo was watching right now so he could explain the filtering to us. Because like we see that when we comment out Blackboard or you know mark it off, it disappears from the list. Ah, uh, yeah. So this is the first time Sonera is being used widely, so some bugs are to be expected. I don't know if these are bugs, though. I'm I'm wondering if it's... Yeah, so Kellyman is saying he's thinking, too, that he expected only the chat comment marked as ASM to show up in exclusive. So maybe it is a bug. Uh, I, I, I'm still not totally sure if it's that we're understanding the filtering correctly or if it's that uh, 
that um, there might actually be bugs. I don't know. But um, I might do a follow-up video. If I'm just not understanding the filtering correctly, I'll do a follow-up video after talking to Miblo so that we understand it <laughs> properly. Uh, and uh, it could also just be that there's bugs. But I will do a follow-up video when either when I understand it correctly or when it's fixed. Um, one of the, you know, some combination of those two. <laughs> but uh, there is filtering, and we see the um, that we have these references. We see this wonderful pane on the right where we get all the annotations, and we can jump around to different annotations, and we can scrub within an annotation. And it gives us, you know, an update on where we are in terms of the progress. We've got the video on the left. You see here these there's credits. So uh, there's me, the host of the video. Uh, it links my Patreon. Uh, the annotator is, of course, Matt Mascarenas, which is Miblo. Um, now let's see what Kelly Mian is saying or even the other way around, where inclusive is everything that matches both the selected topics and media, and exclusive is whatever is left when you do that. Exclusive is a bit of a mystery for sure. Yeah. So uh, like I say, I'll do a follow-up video on that uh, when we have clarification from Miblo. But you can definitely, just from this video, you can see how much is, <laughs> how, how much we already do understand and how much is working and all these wonderful features that it's providing us. Uh, now, of course, these should be links as well, I believe. So if I click on myself, I don't know what this actually does. We're going to find out right now. Wait for the page to load. Okay, so it linked to risky.tv. I can see in the, the loading thing, yeah. So it, it uh, for the annotator, um, okay, so Anduril from Nas Narsil is saying, um, isn't exclusive just removing anything that has a category that is grayed out? Uh, that could be. Okay, so let's take a look here. So we're going to gray out chat comments, right? So this is grayed out now. Now, if we do exclusive. Yeah, so it looks like you, you've got it right. Uh, and you from Narsil. Uh, when we do um, exclusive chat comments disappear when they're grayed out, and uh, when I, when we do inclusive, we see that they appear again. So there's a chat comment, but it's grayed out in the in the thing. But now. Here we're on inclusive, and if I turn off blackboard or turn it back on, so like atomic read and set bits in CSR, turn it off. Oh, okay, so it is still there. But it's not grayed out. Now, if we switch it to exclusive, of course, it disappears. Oh no, it is it is graying it out. It looks like it's graying out the background though. See that it gets a little bit lighter. So that might be a bug. 
that the the text doesn't get grayed out. But it is filtering stuff too when I'm turning these off under inclusive, right? So I still don't understand. So here everything is turned off. We're in inclusive mode. So if I turn on chat comments, we see just chat comments. If I turn on Blackboard, we see Blackboard. Oh, okay. I'm understanding now. All right. Uh, thank you for tuning in, uh, Kelly Mian, and um, I will see you later. Yeah, that's exactly right, Andrew. Uh, it's turning them off if there's nothing. So if we do chat comment, right, it shows us it shows us two. Now if we do ASM, right, we get all the ASM as well as the chat comments because I have those turned on. Now if I turn off chat comment, what you see is this is grayed out because it still shows it still shows because we have ASM selected, right? So it is an ASM one but the chat comment that isn't ASM is filtered out, right? So this is only all the ASM stuff, and the chat one is grayed out because uh, even though it is ASM, it shows it, it's just grayed out because it's, um, you know, it's a chat comment which we have turned off. Now, if we didn't want to see the chat comment because we have it turned off, what you do is you switch it to exclusive, which is saying only show us or am I wrong about that? I was thinking that would show us only the assembly, but we actually have to turn it on in the media. So we actually have to say, I want to see all this stuff in the media. So it's still confusing to me, and this this video might be good feedback for Miblo in that we find the the filtering so confusing. So if the topics, uh, if you select a topic, it does not show them in exclusive mode, whereas in inclusive mode, it does show them. Right, so you can see what that's doing. Exclusive mode, they disappear. Now, what you can do in exclusive mode is you can show based on media, basically. So we can show all these. Now, if we say, um, ASM or hardware, now it does change the filtering now that these these are selected yeah i agree that the interface and terminology is confusing uh So if we select chat comments, okay, so here are two chat comments, right? So we selected chat comments and we have the topics turned on. Now what happens is if I turn off assembly in the topics, it's only going to show me chat comments that uh, 
that uh, aren't assembly is basically the way it's working. So in terms of the exclusive filter mode, what you have to think of basically is these are not, you know, like do a logical not on these. Like we're not including, uh, we're filtering anything that's ASM because we have that turned off. But we do have chat comments turned on, so it's going to show us chat comments. So, like, here's a um, a blackboard session that's not related to assembly. But if I turn on assembly, right, you see there are more blackboard sessions that do relate to assembly. So I think we've got a clear understanding now of how the filtering is actually working, and. Uh, Based on the feedback of what we've, you know, the confusion we had in this video of how it works, I think we understand it now. But uh, Miblo, uh, I'm just curious if you'll change it in the future based on seeing that it's a confusing interface. Uh, he might end up changing the way the filtering works. We will see. But yeah, the credits are links. So this goes to Miblo's website. This goes to risky.tv. This goes to my Patreon. Uh, there's also, uh, oh, so there's even now, is this, is this the handmade network website in general, or is this specifically to Sonera, this keyboard navigation? I don't know if that's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if that's specific to Sonera or not, but that's interesting that there's keyboard navigation. It looks like this is specific to Sonera because uh, it says jump to previous or next marker, toggle filter mode, revert filter to original state. Uh, it has menu toggling, so you can toggle uh, quotes, references, filter, Credits, uh, you have movement, uh, references menu, enter, jump to time code. Oh, wow. Okay. There's open URL, a new tab, X and space, toggle category and focus next, X shift space, toggle category and focus previous. You can invert topics, media, as per focus. There is a credits menu, enter, open URL, and new tab. All right, so there's a lot of interesting stuff you can do using the keyboard to control this thing too. That's really cool. So let's check some of that out. Uh, I don't know what I was opening in this tab, but uh, okay. So now the thing is, I'm using um, I'm using Pentadactyl, uh, the browser extension. So I have like keyboard stuff that's uh, overriding. Now I wonder how I set this in pass through mode. You can do that in Vimperator, but I'm not not as familiar with. Okay, is this in pass-through mode? Doesn't look like it. Here, let me open this up in Chromium. Oh, thank you. Control-Z should do it. Yeah, that's pass-through. Thank you very much, Andrew, uh, Andrew Rill. Okay, now. Okay, so escape goes out of pass through. Okay, now.
Okay, here we have some control. Not okay, here we go. So I'm using J and K to move within this menu. I can use up and down. Okay, here's the help. So if you hit question mark, it opens up the help here. So let's see what all we have. WAP SDN. Here, I'm gonna do it in Chromium. So we're gonna say uh, scenario.risky.tv. Okay, let's click on a video. Uh, something that's gonna have a fair amount of stuff. Okay. Now let's go back to Okay, so we see the keyboard nav, WAP or SDN, jump to previous next marker. Okay, WAP, SDN, uh, we must need to be playing one. Let's take the focus out of the YouTube video. So I'm not... Not getting those to work. Or do they need to be capital? Capital letters. Yeah, they need to be capital letters, don't they? Yes, they do. Okay, so W takes you to the beginning. Uh, A takes you to the beginning. E, that's going to go to the previous. Okay, so here we go to the next. If we do P, it goes to the previous. So N to the next, P to the previous. So you can see we can skip through like that. Now if I hit W, that went to the previous. Let's hit A, that went to the previous. D, okay, D goes down to the next. Uh, it looks like S goes down as well. So there's a variety of keys. I like P and N personally. That's intuitive to me. P and N. What else do we have? Z to toggle filter mode. So. Oh, okay. So you see that's toggling inclusive versus exclusive filter modes when I'm hitting that. Uh, you can do capital V to set the filter to the original state. So let's just set some random filter and then hit capital V. So let's, let's hit this, let's hit that, let's hit that. Just some random filter. Now we're going to hit capital V. And we see it jumps back to the original filtering mode with the original filter set. All right, that's really cool. Uh, movements are, let's see here, we have menu toggling. So if you hit F, it'll open that filter mode. You can also do R for references, C for credits. Uh, we don't have quotes. Now, I wonder, 
we might have quotes in some uh, book club episodes. Let's jump over to one of those in a second here. But let's try these first. So R, we see it opens, it toggles the reference. F toggles filter. Uh, what else was it? C for credits? Yeah. Okay, uh, we have WASD, HJKL, or arrow keys for movement. Uh, so, of course, I'm a fan of HJKL. So, how do we use that in here? Or it's, uh, it must not be for these. These, of course, we can navigate with the N and P, but uh, I take it the movement is for within a menu. So like if we hit F for filter, now we can use, yeah, so now we use HJKL or the arrow keys or whatever else you prefer, WASD, uh, and we can move around inside our menu. Okay. Uh, what else can we do? Uh, in the references menu, so you can hit enter to jump to timecode where something is referenced. That's really interesting. So uh, you can also open the URL using O. So let's try a couple of those. So I'm going to hit R to go to the references menu. Now, um, Okay, in this video, everything has a single reference. I'm curious what happens when there's multiple references. But let's just try this for now. So we're going to go to reference 1, which is uh, the Freedom E310 G000 manual. Apparently, we referenced it at 2012 within the video. So we're going to hit Enter. And we see it jumped in the video to the, the 2012 where we reference this. And it also is showing us that we also reference the the privileged ISA spec. So it's jumped, it's showing us that it's jumped to both of these references. That's really cool. Okay. Now the other thing you can do is let's uh let's go over to the poll of whether I should get better thumbnails, which Spoiler, we decided not to. <laughs> uh, let's uh, hit uh, O to open that. And we see it opens up a new tab with the, the poll. So that's pretty amazing, right? Uh, that's pretty cool. And yeah, you can see we voted no, so that did not happen. But um, what else do we have? Okay, so there's these controls for the, the filter menu. You can use X or space to toggle category and focus next. X shift space to toggle category and focus previous. Uh, v to invert topics, media as per focus. Uh, and there's also uh, in the credits menu, you can use enter to open the URL. So let's play around with the filter menu, and then I'm going to try it out on a couple other videos, and then we're going to call this the stream uh, done. So uh, the next thing I want to do is go to the filter menu. So I'm going to hit F. OK, and now we can you know, move around with HJKL. Now it was saying X or space. So let's hit space. Okay, it toggles it off and okay so if I hit that it toggles it and goes to the next if I hit shift space it toggles and goes to the previous right so that's very nice uh, and X okay and capital X goes the other way uh, and then there's V as well so if I hit V, you see it inverts. So let's, uh, you know, select something like this. Now, if we hit V, you see it inverts our selection. 
And the same would be true for topics if we were over here. So if I hit V, it's inverting. Of course, there's only one on this, so, you know. But uh, yeah, uh, the other thing is the credits menu, hitting enter. So, you know, hit enter, and there's Miblo. All right, uh, let's look at a couple other videos. And then we're going to call it uh, a, a comprehensive review of Sonera. Um, OK, another video I want to show you guys. We're going to go over to book. And we're going to look at one of the latest ones, because uh, these have quotes. Uh, so I think if we hit R for references, uh, or no, uh, uh, Q for quotes, isn't it? So maybe we don't have quotes. See, this this book has quotes in it, and I read quotes, and I was thinking those might show up uh, as like a quotes menu, but apparently not. Maybe it's not an implemented feature. I don't know. Uh, there's menu toggling, and you see grayed out here. There's quotes as a menu. Uh, and I don't know if there's just not quotes for my series, or if it's um, an unimplemented feature. So I wonder if like Handmade Hero, if there's any videos that have quotes. I don't know. Uh, I guess we would have to ask Miblo about the quotes feature. But uh, I'm pretty sure if quotes was what I was thinking it was, I'd expect it to be in one of these videos. Because uh, we read quotes from the book, for sure. So I might just be not understanding what he means by quotes. Either that or it's not implemented. But uh, yeah we see um, that it's quite uh, an amazing thing he has here. Now this one, we see another thing where we have a bunch of different references within the references menu for something. So if I hit R, now I'm curious what happens when I hit Enter to jump to where this is referenced. So, okay, it jumps to the first reference. Now, oh, cool. So I can actually move using H and L, not J and K apparently, but H and L, I can move back and forth between these references. And I can say like, I wanna go to the sixth reference of this, the, of the book that we're reading, right? And so bam, now we're on the sixth reference to it. So that's how he handles that. OK, I think we've got a pretty comprehensive review of this. The other thing I want to say before we end the stream is uh, I have a few recommendations if you're watching my videos. Uh, I recommend watching at 2x speed. And that's you set that in the YouTube player using the little, uh, the little gear icon for settings. Uh, I highly recommend watching me on 2x speed. I would not recommend watching at normal speed. Um, the other thing is um, quality. I'd highly recommend 480p or higher. Uh, the videos are pretty blurry at 360p and lower. I think you'll have a good experience if you watch at at least 480p. Um, the other thing is YouTube will often default to this auto setting. And so if it decides your internet isn't fast enough, it might drop you down to like 360p or lower, which can be annoying. So, you, you know, <laughs> if it's looking blurry, you know, just take a look at the setting and make sure it's at 480 or higher. Uh, that's my recommendation for watching my videos. Uh, the other thing is uh, if you don't like the YouTube player, uh, there's another project on the Handmade Network for uh, video content in general. 
uh, if I go to projects here, there is motion box. Now motion box is a video browser, which is very interesting. And I'd recommend checking it out. Uh, you're not going to get all the amazing features of the episode guide if you do that, but it's another way to consume my content. Uh, it would be interesting to see if uh, Miblo and Benjamin or Nod, I'm not sure if that's the pronunciation of his last name, uh, I believe he's French, but um, Benjamin and Miblo, it would be interesting if they could collaborate and have like the Sonera stuff integrated into Motionbox. I don't know how hard that would be. And uh, it might not be something that ever happens, but that would just be something that would make me to ha me happy to see if the community collaborated and uh, it was possible to use the episode guide stuff with like motion box or other software like that. Uh, but that's just me. <laughs> that's just me dreaming. Uh, I don't know if anything of, of that sort will ever happen. But uh, I'm just I just want to give a shout out to Motionbox that this is another amazing piece of software where if you don't want to directly use the YouTube player, you can watch my videos. It it pulls the video from YouTube and you can stream it through this this uh, third party software, basically. Uh, and that's uh, I think everything I have to say, I think we've covered all the features that Sonera has uh, for that for the end user for the episode guide. Uh, and yeah, so you know you can just jump over, you know, say I want to know about the PLIC. Here's every place I've referenced the PLIC, you know, and you can find something interesting about the PLIC, and you can watch it, you know, just click on it, and bam, you're watching that exact moment in my content. You know, just pop over here, set it to 2x speed, and you're good to go. So yeah, uh, I think this is a complete game changer for how to consume my content. Uh, I think it's absolutely huge that we have this kind of technology now. Uh, so this is what I recommend as the the standard de facto way to to use risky business content. You watch my videos and find something in my videos that you want to see. Uh, you don't have to watch my videos from, you know, episode one up to whatever the latest episode is front to back. You can just, you know, read through the annotations. You know, you can just click on a video, look at, look at the annotations, and if something stands out to you that you want to watch it, you just click on it, and now you're watching that thing that you want to see. And uh, if you, uh, you might not want to do that, you might want to actually watch my content front to back, uh, but you might want to come back and reference something that you saw before that you, you know, you remember I said something about some specific topic, like, uh, something about the CSR, right? So you say CSR and you say, uh, you know, let's see here. A lot of stuff about read CSR, clear CSR. Okay, so here's, uh, we're reading about clear CSR in conjunction with the documentation on the CSR. Maybe that's what you wanted to find. You remembered me doing that. You know, you just have that vague memory in your head of, of seeing me do that and you want to reference it, but you don't remember what episode it was in. You don't remember where it was within that episode. You know, you just search it on the thing and then you click it and now you're there, right? So, and it might be something that you don't even know I did it, where again, uh, it's like you just, uh, you wanna know about, uh, let's pick another topic, uh, CarPlex local interrupt controller off the top of my head, right? So let's search CLINT, okay? And we're saying, now we're pretending we're someone who doesn't watch my content actively. You haven't seen the content of me, you know, learning about the CarPlex local interrupt controller, but you decide that's something you're interested in and you want to just watch some clips of me learning about that stuff. So let's, you know, just search it and then 
jump to the part where I read about CarPlex local interrupts. And now we're at the part where I'm learning about CarPlex local interrupts. Okay, so that that's, gives you a much wider range of possibilities for how to consume my content, how to reference my content. Uh, it's a complete game changer. So uh, one more time, I want to give you uh, an absolutely huge shout out to uh, Miblo for writing all this amazing software. And a shout out to uh, Kelly Mian, uh, that's Drone, uh, who's been an absolutely fantastic and loyal supporter of our series. Um, but a, a, a little shout out for him here for uh, helping integrate this into the Handmade Network website, which is where this is, you know, what we're looking at right now. So thank you guys so much for, uh, you know, making this amazing thing a reality. Uh, uh, this really makes my content accessible in a way that it never could have been before. And that just, you know, it makes me so happy. It blows my mind that we have something like this now for Risky Business. So, you know, from the bottom of my heart, <laughs> thank you to the, the people who have made this possible. Uh, and I hope th uh, this is a, a great, useful review for people who want to want to know how to get into risky business, want to know how to watch my content, you know, how to use this amazing software and make the most of it. So uh, I hope this is helpful for people. I'm going to be putting it up on YouTube. Uh, and with that, uh, I'll see you guys on risky business. So uh, thank you for watching and stay risky, everyone.